Hello, my name is Joe Hill. I'm uh, from UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas. I'm also the Editor-in-Chief of Circulation, and I'm joined here by... Aruna Pradhan. I am a cardiologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. And it's a pleasure here uh, to be with you here today. We've just walked out of a wonderful session this morning, late breaking clinical trials that focused on some innovative therapies and strategies to reduce cardiovascular risk. It's not often that you participate in a session that borders on practice changing, but we have seen now, starting with the ESC a couple of months, and again today, the DAPA heart failure trial, focusing on dapagliflozin in patients with or without diabetes has emerged with benefit irrespective of the presence of diabetes or not irrespective of your hemoglobin A1C. It has now emerged as a HEFREF therapy in addition to its previous role as a type two diabetes therapy. And that's fantastic news. No matter what your hemoglobin A1C, uh, you can benefit from this potentially uh, anti-diabetic agent, at least that was first touted as an anti-diabetic agent, now crossing sectors into cardiovascular disease. With benefit that is comparable to what was seen in paradigm heart failure with Secubitril Valsartan. So it is, it is an impactful change. Another trial that was presented is Orion 10, which is a trial to evaluate Inclizeron, which is an siRNA targeting hepatocytes due to, to target and decrease the expression of PCSK9. And the benefits there were, were yes. impressive. At least a 50% reduction in, in LDL cholesterol that was sustained over the 18-month period of, of follow-up, and only two injections per, per year. That's fantastic news in terms of compliance. It was well tolerated. It was just one injection. They, they changed it to a pre-filled syringe, and, the, and the, the little signal of pain went down. Uh, it was well tolerated, and it just completely dropped your, your LDL uh, impressively in a, uh, a well-tolerated fashion. And now, of course, it wasn't powered for outcomes, and, and that we'll have to uh, see going forward, but certainly there is millions of patient year, subject year history showing that declines in LDL cholesterol are associated with clinical benefit. Right, I mean, to me, it's still unclear uh, at what cost this agent will, will be uh, marketed at, should it be uh, available after the outcome studies. Uh, it's also not clear to me which patients would go on a PCSK9 inhibitor as opposed to, to this agent. So a lot of questions that need to be resolved with further study and perhaps even guidelines as, as uh, these trials start to come out. So Aruna here was, was a, uh, an expert discussant of a novel anti-inflammatory trial. Yes, the Colcott trial, really quite surprising uh, to some, uh, and, and certainly perhaps new to many cardiologists that colchicine, an agent that we know for treatment of, of pericarditis and know for treatment of gout, actually has some potential benefit for cardiovascular risk reduction in, in patients in the, in the recent MI population. So uh, overall, uh, this therapy appears to, to have its mechanistic effect in a similar way to, uh, to canakinumab and the Cantos trial, which was certainly the proof of concept study in this area. Now we have a second agent uh, that, that may impact the same pathway, and at least for the primary outcome of the trial, uh, showed about a 25%, exactly 23%, but roughly 25% risk reduction for those total events. It was a bit disappointing perhaps to some that the individual endpoints of myocardial infarction, cardiovascular disease death, uh, total mortality were not reduced in this trial. But nonetheless, all of the signals that were derived from the study suggest a benefit in each of those uh, without the overall individual risk reduction that perhaps we would have hoped for. And I was pleasantly surprised to find that this colchicine at this dose was well tolerated. I frankly thought it wouldn't be. Right. I mean, cardiologists, we don't tend to use this long term. This was a study that lasted two years, so chronic therapy, daily use for, th for, for two years. And the side effects, including diarrhea, were, were no incre not increased in those who were randomized to this therapy. Uh, overall, uh, the drug discontinuation rates were equivalent between placebo and those assigned to colchicine. Uh, so surprise, surprise, uh, this actually seems to be well tolerated in these patients. And there was a little signal of harm for pneumonia, which, as you pointed out, may be the price we have to pay. Right, absolutely. I mean, you, you certainly in these anti-inflammatory trials, uh, those that modulate neutrophil activation, those, those uh, cellular elements of the immune system that uh, act to, to uh, 
uh, um, combat infection, you do worry about in increased infection rates. And in this trial, there was an increased risk of, of pneumonia, but the other severe uh, infection outcomes were not increased. So I think that's reassuring. I think it's also reassuring that the pathway that's being activated is in fact an inflammatory pathway. So exciting, exciting developments in inflammation. And the, the last trial that was presented is an epigenetic trial presented by Cossack Ray from the UK focusing on an inhibitor of bromodomain proteins. You may know that epigenetics, of course, is the governance of gene expression without changing the gene code, the nucleotide sequence. And there are epigenetic writers and there are epigenetic erasers, and this bromodomain proteins are epigenetic readers. These are the proteins that read the epigenetic code and impact gene expression. There is phase two trial suggestive evidence of clinical benefit here. And so these investigators took a high risk population of patients who had a prior ACS and type two diabetes and exposed them to a mole molecule, a drug called apobetalone, which targets these bromo domains with the hypothesis that it would decrease a composite of multiple events. In fact, it did, but it did not do so statistically significantly. The trial in the end was neutral. It did not achieve its primary endpoint. Which is a bit disappointing, but I think that looking at, you know, from a, from a statistical perspective, uh, the p-value itself has been under a lot of uh, criticism recently as uh, perhaps not being the metric that by which we should assess efficacy and even uh, benefit in these, in these trials. Um, if you look at the survival curves, they did diverge and they, they were very supportive of a potential benefit. Could a larger study have, have given them the endpoints that they needed? Perhaps, as was commented on by Swati Shah, uh, the concern is how do you enroll uh, this many patients in the, into this type of trial with the inclusion criteria that were used? The event rates were uh, less than the investigators anticipated, so in the end it was underpowered, so uh, the jury is still out, I would say. That's right. But it was an amazing session. The, the room was packed. People were, it was standing room only by all means. People were seated on the floor and it was, it was an exciting session. Yes, a good time for, for science at the American Heart Association. Looking forward to what else is coming in the next few days. It's an exciting meeting. Yes.